Super Mario 3D World The Wii U's 3D Mario game that many refuse to call a 3D Mario game. I mean, seriously guys, if the amount of dimensions on display in this game isn't 3, then I'm afraid my grasp on geometry is sorely lacking. What? Oh, I see. Apparently it's not the quantity of dimensions that have people saying that, but rather because the game's design is much more akin to that of prior 2D Mario games than 3D Mario games. That I definitely do see. I mean, you've got super mushrooms, flagpoles, unnaturally blocky terrain, and up in the top right corner of the screen, a score counter. Every 2D Mario game's favorite vestigial design element from the arcades. Now I say vestigial because I'm not really much of a high score seeker myself. Just not something I have much interest in. But maybe I could go for a low score instead. Now that, I like the sound of. So come along, viewers, we've got a pressing question to answer. What is the lowest possible score required to beat Super Mario 3D World? Alright, as stated earlier, our goal is to beat Super Mario 3D World, i.e. get all the way to the end of World 8 and beat Meowser with the lowest possible score. As such, we should try to understand exactly which actions add to our score, and therefore should be avoided as best we can. Here is a non-exhaustive list. Defeating enemies, touching coins, getting power-ups, destroying boxes, destroying bricks, getting stamps, activating P-switches, activating floor switches, going through coin rings, getting checkpoints, getting green stars, touching the flagpole, defeating bosses, and like I said, that's not an exhaustive list. If you don't remember all of that, don't worry, I'll mention them again as they become relevant. One other thing to discuss before we get started in earnest is a weird quirk of 3D World where your score for a given level is wiped away upon your death. That means that theoretically one could get the checkpoint in a level, then intentionally die to wipe away any score that they have acquired up to that point. That to me though comes across as a tactic akin to shooting star bits in Super Mario Galaxy as a loophole for a no star bits challenge. Which in case you're not aware, I don't support. We are not going to be using such a tactic here either. The way we're handling this is as follows. If we get points, we either start the level completely over, or we just add those points to our total score and move on. No shenanigans with the afterlife to be found here. With all that addressed, let's get into it, starting with 1-1, Super Bell Hill. Some of the most consistent score sources we'll be trying to avoid throughout this challenge will be enemies and coins, both of which are present in the first part of this level though not in a way that's really all that difficult to avoid. It's not long though until we come across a slightly more interesting feature found in this level, as well as all others. A green star. These cosmic collectibles yield 4,000 points upon their collection, so we just shouldn't get them then, right? Wrong. Here's the deal, Super Mario 3D World's level progression is not strictly based on beating levels. It also requires the collection of a certain number of green stars to unlock some of the world's final levels, including the game as a whole's final level. So essentially, we need to acquire 170 green stars at some point in our journey to beat this game. That'll end up equating to 680,000 unavoidable points from green stars alone by the end of the game. <sighs> That's a lot of points, but unfortunately it can't be helped. For now though, this level will only contribute 12,000 points in green stars, as all three green stars in this level can be obtained without need for extra points outside of the 4,000 inherent in getting a green star. But that's not the only thing we've got to consider getting here. One other decision we have to make is whether or not we get a power-up. On the face of it, it seems like a pretty bad idea. We're talking about an extra 1,000 points for the privilege of being a cat. And being a cat, while certainly beneficial, is not necessary to beat this game. 
But being a cat doesn't necessarily need to be mandatory for it to be worthwhile in this instance. All that must be true for the cat suit to be a net positive is that possessing a cat suit later in the game will save us at least 1000 points. I already have a few instances in mind that'll likely make that the case. As such, here in 1-1 we do snatch ourselves up a cat suit for an extra 1000 points added to the score right now. Hopefully, it'll be worth it. So here we are, 13,000 points in the hole, and we're not even through the first level yet. Yep, there's one more score-based obstacle that this level has yet to put in our path. The flagpole. Which can threaten us with points in two ways. Firstly is the flagpole itself, which gives you points directly correlated with how high you are on the flagpole. And unlike in other Mario games where getting to the top of the flagpole gives you a 1-up instead of points, in Super Mario 3D World, you get a 1-up in addition to 10,000 points. Needless to say, we'll be aiming for the lowest part of the flagpole, which is made a bit more difficult by the cat suit we've acquired. The reason it's more difficult is that if your left analog stick is pressed essentially at all while your cat self is on the flagpole, you start clambering up it, which just so happens to be the exact opposite of what we would like to happen. In order to mitigate this, we need to somehow move to touch the flagpole without using the analog stick. This is where the cat dive comes in. If we arrange ourselves at the proper distance from the flagpole, we can jump straight up and then activate the dive to get us on the lowest part of the flagpole without pressing the analog stick at all, thus netting us only 200 points. Which, just to be clear, is the minimum amount of points that touching the flagpole gets you. Okay, we're on the flagpole, so we're done with the first level now, right? Not quite. You see, we don't just need to worry about where we touch the flagpole, but also when we touch the flagpole. This is because upon touching the flagpole, you get 50 points for each second left on the clock. Luckily, after a bit of research, I found that it is possible to touch the flagpole with exactly 0 seconds left on the clock. It's not even all that difficult, really. Doesn't change the mild annoyance of having to sit around at the end of the level until the timer runs out, though. Oh well. Ultimately, we leave 1-1 with 13,200 points. Now let's take a look at 1-2. In terms of green stars, the first is extremely easy to get without gaining any extra points. The second requires defeating enemies, which of course would gain us points, so we'll be ignoring that one for now. And the third is in the middle of a stack of Goombas, which can be nabbed by Peach using her float ability. Another thing we can do here is gain another power-up, the Fire Flower. Taking this power-up would add another 1,000 points to our score. But, just like with the cat suit, I believe that the Fire Flower will likely end up saving us over 1,000 points over the course of the rest of the game. And yes, we can have both of them at once. As when you get a power-up in Super Mario 3D World when you already have one, the old one gets saved for later use. And of course, switching between these power-ups once we already have them doesn't cause us to incur any more points. Okay, that's 9,000 points crewed in this level so far. Now on to the flagpole. Except in this level, we've got another option. A certain red warp pipe which achieves two things for us. Firstly, this secret exit doesn't cost any points to use, which right off the bat saves us 200 points. In addition to that benefit, taking the warp pipe here doesn't bring us further along in World 1, but instead ferries us all the way to World 2. That is a huge amount of points saved. Potentially over 16,000 points, in fact. And one other thing I'd like to mention is that the cat suit was instrumental in getting the secret exit, so it's already paid for itself. And with that, we are off to World 2, with a current total of 22,200 points. Getting to the flagpole in 2-1 is not much of a problem at all. There are also two green stars that can be gained no problem, and one that requires killing a conch door, so we'll pass on that one. That's 8,200 points from this level. From there, 2-3 is our only option at the fork ahead, as we don't have enough green stars to unlock 2-2. The first green star here is laughably easy to get. Not much further into the level, a giant shadow piranha plant stands in our way. Jumping on this plant is one way past it, but 
it is a way that gives us 400 points. I tried side flipping over the piranha plant, but that didn't quite give me enough height to get over without touching the creature. The other options would be running through the plant and just taking the hit. I'd really rather not do that and lose the cat suit or fire flower, as they're quite useful and reobtaining them would add a thousand more points to our score. So we can't get over it or through it, but someone else can. Yep, the time has come to call in multiplayer. If we bring Toad in as a second player, he can take the hit force and get us through the door. Then almost immediately, we have an opportunity to try to get to the level's second green star. At first glance, it would seem that hitting a P-switch, which would give us 100 points, is required to get the green star. As it turns out, though, the green star is accessible without hitting the switch. The P-switch just helps us to see it. So it's completely unnecessary to actually get the star. What is a bit more problematic is the fact that the mystery box drops us directly on a coin after we've gotten the green star. Collecting a coin yields 100 points, so we can't get this green star without adding additional points after all. But what if the coins weren't there? Well, then we'd be able to get this green star no problem. But the fact remains that the coins are there, and the only way to make that not be the case would be by collecting the coins, which gives us 100 points apiece. That would be logical, but it leaves out one important fact. This, this my, my friends, friends, is a, is a Wii, Wii U game. game. And that, of course, means that there are loads of obligatory little gamepad mechanics that you barely even notice exist when you play through the game normally, but can nevertheless be exploited for our game today. In this specific case, touching the coins on the gamepad collects them, which, yes, I just stated we don't want to do, but under these specific circumstances, it's different, since if the gamepad isn't joined in as a player, nothing the gamepad does produces points. We can take advantage of this by using the gamepad to get those coins out of the way before going for the green star. The gamepad then has one more time to shine, knocking down this Bowser cutout to get the third green star of the level. And with just a little touch of the flying pole, the level is cleared with 12,200 points, which is actually just about the perfect amount of points to get in a level, since it means we're getting all three green stars in the level without requiring any points other than the ones from the flagpole and green stars themselves. Next up is 2-4, which has some slip coins, which can certainly catch you off guard, as well as these annoying hamster dudes, which are normally quite nice to cat dive through. Of course, we can't do that, since that would give us points. No matter, though, they're not that hard to avoid. With regards to green stars, the first and third are pretty easy. The second one, though, is a bit of a doozy. To get the star, you need to run around lighting up these panels. The catch? Lighting a panel gives you 100 points, and there's a lot of panels here. Good thing we can light them up with the gamepad for a cost of 0 points. Of course, that isn't made easy by the fact that when exiting the warp pipe that gets you in this room, you land immediately on an unlit pan, which then of course becomes lit and gives you 100 points. But in the end, we do prevail here just by sheer speed in touching that panel with the gamepad. Another level cleared with 12,200 points. Next thing I did was take a look at the World 2 Mystery House, which is all about defeating enemies. Good thing it's optional. Something that's not optional, though, is the Big Galoomba Blockade, which is also entirely about defeating enemies. These three Galoombas yield 800 points each to defeat, plus a total of 9 coins worth of points among the three of them, that you get automatically after defeating them with a melee attack, like a jump or a cat claw. We can, however, ground pound these Galoombas, which doesn't remove the coin points, but does remove one of the hits required to defeat them, and therefore reduces the amount of points this level gives us to 6,100 points. The next level is 2-5, in which, given our limitations, we unfortunately cannot engage with the main gimmick of the whole level, the Double Cherry. Oh well. What actually matters is the fact that while destroying boxes typically yields 10 points, a touch from a playerless gamepad can give us access to the green stars within without need to receive those 10 points. Then, every other green star in the level is gained by using multiplayer in lieu of the double cherry. This level doesn't present us with the best case scenario of 12,200 points though, as at one point to advance we need to kill Firebird. 
Using the Fire Flower method clocks in at an additional 1,000 points, leading to a total of 13,200 points from this level. Then comes 2 Tank. The first green star here is a bit tricky. Because of all of the prana plants surrounding it, it's very easy to accidentally take damage or kill a plant in pursuit of the green star. The second is hiding in a box, just like the first from the previous level, and can be gained in the exact same way without issue. The last is behind a wall that when destroyed grants 10 points, and this time, the gamepad isn't powerful enough to destroy it. So for now, we'll ignore it and move on to our first proper boss fight. Boom Boom is an easy fight, albeit one that necessitates a lot of unavoidable points. It's a three hit fight, with the first hit being worth 2000 points, the second being worth 4000 points, and the third being worth 8000 points. There's not really anything we can do to mitigate this, aside from fighting as few bosses as possible. And unfortunately, this is one that is mandatory. That means 2 Tank hands us another 22,200 points, bringing our total coming out of World 2 to 96,300 points. 3 1 features these Goombas on ice, which are really annoying to deal with without killing them, due in large part to the ice physics. Just an annoyance, though. The first green star requires a bit of multiplayer to get, and then after that, the other obstacles are easy, as well as the next couple of levels. The Magic Koopa blockade isn't difficult, but does yield 7,000 points, including the ones inherent to the green star itself. 3-5 has two easy green stars in it, and one locked behind a wall, which would cause us to gain 10 points, so we don't get that one. 8,200 points from this level. We can get every green star from 3-7, but it's not a complete pushover due to a fair amount of coins in the level. That's another 12,200 points. 3 Train is once again a level that lets us get all 3 green stars without gaining points outside of the green stars themselves. One element of strategy I used to make this level a bit easier was by freezing these bonsai bills, because otherwise I was finding it very easy to incidentally defeat one. The level also features a boss fight with Pom Pom, which unavoidably inflates the score received in this level. Inflated to 26,200 points in fact. And with World 3 cleared, we move on to World 4, with a total score of 186,500 points. But first we get ambushed by Histocrat. It's a boss fight with a green star and a flagpole, and thus gets the standard amount of points for such a level, 18,200 points. So we're really going into World 4 with 204,700 points. The first level in World 4 gives us a very friendly welcome, by giving us easy access to all three of its green stars. Sure, it eventually throws some coins at us, but those are actually pretty fun to avoid. Then after that, the level proceeds to kick us in the teeth. How, you ask? A couple of annoyingly placed ants, that's how. Somehow this hasn't come up yet, but the flagpole has another awesome power to reveal. It kills everything in its vicinity upon being touched. And gives us all the points for those kills. Thank you, Flagpole, how magnanimous of you. Adding insult to injury is that we also get the coins from the enemies killed, and of course the points that come along with that. The only way to avoid these points that the Flagpole is bestowing upon us would be to get rid of the ants. And given the extremely simple AI of these ants, the only way that's going to happen is with a bit of Fire Flower extermination. This approach still does give us 200 points per ant, but does at least eliminate the coin-based points. That means 4-1 ultimately gives us 12,600 points. 4-2 is a very exciting level. That's because it contains the second secret exit in the game. Once again, we'll be taking it, as skipping a castle is virtually guaranteed to be worthwhile. As for the level itself, it starts kind of annoyingly with this piranha creeper coming out of a warp pipe. Unfortunately, to progress through this level, we have to kill this poor creature, and thus gain 1,000 points. After swallowing those points, we can at least pick up the first two green stars in the level no problem, and then after that we rely heavily on the gamepad to get through this 2D section littered with coins. We don't end up with the third green star though, because it requires us to get green coins, which we could actually get with the gamepad for no extra points, 
but unfortunately can't make a peer without passing through this green star ring thing, which nets us 100 points. In the end, we take the secret exit to World 5 with 9,000 points from this level, and 226,300 points in total. Now time for 5-1. A very rough opening to the world. Issue number one. These key token things, which are worth 1,000 points apiece, are of course necessary to get through this level. As for stars, the first needs a little gamepad magic to get, but overall is no big deal. And this one with Captain Toad goes severely against my pacifist principles, so we pass it up. The plessy section just requires some avoidance. This one part of it looks tricky from the outset. Jumping isn't really an option given the coin ring above, but the solution is actually quite simple. Just ram the... What are these things called again? Splounders. Okay. Where were we? Yes, yes, these, uh, splounders. They sink down into the water after you run into them, and then from there we can just slip under the coin ring. So, really not much of an issue. And then there's the flagpole area, which contains quite a few enemies. And that means points. These beetles are straightforward if annoying. The best we can do about them is fireflower them so we at least don't get their coin points. Now the Koopa Troopa... That guy gives us a bit more options with dealing with him. What I decided to do was knock his shell off, then pick it up after which he started chasing after me. I then led him to a far corner of the platform, where I throw off his shell and then freeze him in place with the gamepad. I then manipulate the camera in such a way that I can keep him frozen in place, as I get well out of his aggro range. Now he more or less minds his own business in the corner, which puts him out of range of the flagpole's death, which means this Koopa won't be giving us any points. Unfortunately, the level as a whole still does give us 14,000 points. After that, we take a break with a much nicer level, 5 Toad, which is a level that lets us get 5 green stars for 20,000 points, which is no more than the inherent cost of the green stars themselves. Yay for free green stars! Speaking of which, how many of those do we have right now? 50. Huh. We'll need to have 170 by the final level, Hopefully it's not too much of a hassle. Speaking of green stars, 5-2 requires 80 to access, so I guess that means we'll have to play 5-3 at this fork. And the first star is pretty easy to get. Second, no, just no. And third is another green coin based one, so no. 4,200 points from this level. Next up is Charge and Chuck Blockade is back, which as a level name makes no sense given the context I have available. Oh well. Uh, we get a green star and 6,000 unavoidable points here. Next up is 5-4, which to put things simply has two easy green stars and one impossible green star. For once, the main challenge with this level lies not in getting green stars, but instead it lies in just flat out clearing the level. The clear pipe slash cannon section is where the difficulty comes in. The intended way to get past this section is by using the clear pipes and cannons to blast through an invincibility star, fuzzies, and bricks. The star and fuzzies can be avoided, but once you go in that first clear pipe, the bricks are doomed to break. Which, as a reminder, would give us 10 points for each brick block broken. Not to worry, though. The solution is quite simple. Step 1. Use Luigi for his great jump height. Step 2. Use the cat suit to climb on top of the first cat. Step 3. Climb, then jump, then dive back onto the wall to climb some more to get on top of the second cannon. Step 4. Climb sideways along the wall, then jump around the bricks to enter the last clear pipe. See? Simple. Wait a minute. As I'm writing the script, I think I just realized a much easier way I could have done that. Step 1. Go in the first clear pipe and launch carefully from the cannon, making sure to avoid the invincibility star and fuzzies. Step 2. When they get in frame, use the gamepad to destroy the bricks points free. Step 3. Win. All that work perfecting my climb up this wall for nothing. Also, there's some infinitely spawning ants at the flagpole, which means we're leaving this level with another 9,400 points. Moving on. 5-5 is then a pretty simple level, so long as you remember that the gamepad can activate PAL blocks with no effect on score. Oh, and I guess making the landing on this 8-bit Mario safely takes some doing as well. 12,200 points from this level. Then comes 5-7, 
which becomes an escort mission. We carry Toad as Luigi all through the first part of the level in order to use him to get an extra bit of height to grab the first green star. The other two wouldn't be too difficult if we could actually be a bit sneaky. Unfortunately, the bubble that we keep Toad in for the rest of the level activates the searchlights. <sighs> Just got to not get hit or accidentally kill one of the bolts. Easier said than done, but not impossible. In the end, it's a 12,200 point level. Five Castle has two green stars we can get, one we can't, and a boss fight. 22,200 points here, and that means we're going into World 6 with 326,500 points. 6 1 starts off with a couple of green stars annoyingly locked away in clear pipes behind coins, and therefore unobtainable for us. It does have one that's fairly easy to get, but the level as a whole doesn't get much love for me on account of the return of these key tokens, which once again add 5,000 points to the level. That means this level has a total of 9,200 points for us. 6-2 goes much better, thanks in large part to the fact that we can push bullies off for free with the gamepad, which at one point helps us get a star and at another point helps us just flat out progress through the level. 12,200 points here. At the intersection, we must take 6-4, which is overall pretty easy. The one difficulty we have here is the fact that the level's second green star is, once again, a green coin-based one. 8,200 points from this level. Next thing we have to do is face the Prince Bully Blockade, which is just a boss fight, so we've got 14,000 unavoidable points here, plus 4,000 from the green star, or 18,000 points from this blockade. Then at the next intersection, we pick 6-6 six, six, as 6-5 six, has enemies at its flagpole, which give us points that we'd rather avoid. 6-6, six, six, on the other hand, easily gets us 3 green stars for 12,200 points in the level. 6-7 then proceeds to be a similarly simple affair, even in spite of its auto-scrolling nature and tricky coin placements. Once again, we've got a level that grants us all 3 green stars at the expense of 12,200 points. We take a visit by 6 Mystery House and can then nab the first two green stars in it without issue, for just the cost of the green stars themselves. Or 8,000 points. 6 Tank is a bit of a gamepad extravaganza. We've got to use it to throw bombs, collect coins, freeze bros, all while trying to make sure our actual player character doesn't get hit by a stray hammer. This is another three green star level, although this one does have a boss fight at the end, meaning that it gives us 26,200 points. Before we get to World Castle, we've got another boss to take care of. Motley Boss Blob. The trick with this guy is just making sure you defeat him without accidentally killing any of his little blob dudes. This was actually fairly easily achieved by taking a bit of a detour to distract the little blobs. Ultimately, the boss fight doesn't cause us to gain any more points than other boss fights, so 18,200 points it is. Which means we're headed into World Castle with a total score of 450,900 points. Castle 1 is the first level we've played where not a single green star can be obtained without adding extra points. On top of that, we have to kill this fire bro to progress through the level, which is worth 1,000 points. There's actually another fire bro later on in the level that you have to kill to progress, but I was able to get him to jump into the lava, because that's where his Goomba stack went for some reason. Eh, works for me. Oh, also, at the end, there's this fire bro that looks like he might be trouble, but a quick tap on the block he's standing on neutralizes him easily. 1,200 points from this level. Castle 3 is fast-paced, has lots of coins, and features some clear pipes at the end that have the potential to really screw you, but it can be overcome with 2 green stars and 8,200 points. Yeah. Next up is an intersection. The choice here is between two boss blockades, which would both give us the exact same score. So our choice here doesn't matter, right? Wrong! This branch doesn't end at these blockades. In a way, this branch will echo through the rest of the challenge. That's because while the blockades are equivalent, the levels they lead to most certainly are not. The bully blockade leads to Castle 6, which is a level that can get us two green stars, but also contains enemies at the flagpole that upon completion of the level will add an extra 3,000 points to our score. On the other hand, the Brolder Blockade leads to Castle 5, which will also grant us two stars, but this one has those key tokens, which by their very presence add 5,000 more points to the score gained in that level. So that makes Castle 6 the clear winner then, right? I mean, 
It's got the same amount of forward progression and green stars for less points. It must be the better option. Seems that way, but there's one more detail we haven't addressed yet. Castle 5 unlocks a Captain Toad level, one which can give us 5 green stars for no extra points. That means the calculation isn't between 2 green stars one way and 2 the other, but instead 3,200 extra points for 2 green stars, or 5,200 extra points for 7 green stars. That means the cost of the green stars on Castle 6's paths is 1,600 points per green star, whereas the cost of going down Castle 5's path is only about 743 extra points per green star. So in a world where getting as many green stars as possible, at as low a cost as possible, is what we're after, which, just for the record, with only 85 of the 170 green stars we need to have by the end of the game collected at this late stage, it is something we are very much after. So in that context, Castle 5 looks to be by far the better choice. If you take a very narrow view of the decision, that is. Let's not forget that these two levels aren't the only places to get green stars. While yes, Castle 5's 743 extra points per green star is a steep discount compared to Castle 6's 1600 points, they're both laughably high compared to the 10 extra points it would take to grab those green stars hidden behind walls, or the 100 points to get a green coin-based green star. We need to be looking at the whole game here to make this decision properly, and realize that going for Castle 5 only makes sense if we end up so starved for green stars that 400 extra points for one, which is how much we would in effect be paying for those 5 Captain Toad stars, legitimately becomes our best deal. I don't think that'll be the case, but before making this choice, I have to be sure. It's time we do some serious routing. Up until this point, we've been trying to get to the final level while playing as few levels as possible, sticking strictly to the critical path, if you would, and collecting as many green stars within those levels that could be attained without needing to get additional points, like by defeating enemies or something similar. The reason we were doing that is because even just the act of clearing levels gains us points. Every flagpole we touch is a guaranteed 200 points. And I guess part of me foolishly hoped that even playing so few levels, we'd have enough free green stars to beat the game. That sadly is not the case. As such, now is the time where we need to start compromising on green star points. We've only got about half of what we need by game's end, with only about a world left to go. Going forward, we are going to have to accept the fact that some of the green stars we get will have extra points attached to them. What our job is now is to discover which green stars give us the least points. And in order to do that, we need to compare the points required to get each green star with every other green star in the game. To be confident that we're making the right choice here, we need to know everything. And the first thing to figure out is what exactly we missed out on by skipping worlds 1 and 4. Before we invest too much time and resources into actually investigating these worlds, I figured it would be a good idea to run a simulation and see if the extra points required to get the green stars in Worlds 1 and 4 are even competitive if we assume the best case scenario of all levels giving us a beautiful score of 12,200 points and 3 green stars. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to be ignoring the points of the green stars themselves in this analysis for the routing. At the moment, all we care about are the points outside of the green stars. Here is World 1's best case scenario. 200 points from getting the flagpole in 1-2. 1,600 points and 1 green star from the Charge and Chuck blockade. 0 points and 5 green stars from 1 toad. 200 points and 3 green stars from 1-3. 200 points and 3 green stars from 1-4. 200 points and 3 green stars from 1-5 and 14,200 points and 3 green stars from one castle. Now obviously, the castle isn't going to be very point sufficient, but in the best case scenario, stopping just before the castle would leave us with 160 points per green star. That doesn't seem unreasonable, but we'll have to compare it to everything else before we decide for sure. As for World 4's best case scenario, it is as follows. 200 points for getting the flagpole in 4-2, 800 points and 1 green star from the Brolder blockade, 200 points and 3 green stars from 4-4, 0 points and 10 green stars from 4 Mystery House, 200 points and 3 green stars from 4-5, 200 points and 3 green stars from 4-3, and 14,200 points and 3 green stars from 4 Castle. Th that best case scenario is 80 points per star, again leaving off the castle, which we can do since having taken the secret exit we don't need to play it for progression purposes. 
Anyway, that points per green star number seems really good. We'll definitely need to look further into World 4. Now it's time for me to do some research and make some comparisons with the rest of the game. See you in a bit. Alright, time to answer the question that got us started down this rabbit hole. Is 400 extra points for a green star ever going to be a good deal? To figure that out, I compiled together a spreadsheet of what I found to be the 80 cheapest green stars for us to get, taking into consideration everything. Not just the points required right then and there to get it, but also, if it's a new level, the points from the flag, any levels and by extension green stars that would be unlocked along the path of getting it, playing with how many green stars to get from a level when multiple require extra points, among other factors, and this is what I came up with. A spreadsheet of levels sorted with least points required per green star levels at the top, and the most of this selection at the bottom. Now we do actually get some pretty high numbers towards the bottom of the list, but all of the 200 and over levels are either levels necessary to beat the game, or make up for it by unlocking future levels in World 4. Which, while the best case didn't exactly pan out there, it actually ended up being close to 150 points per green star. It does still ultimately make the cut, even if only barely. Mostly due to that 10 star mystery house they have there. Anyway, the spreadsheet also shows that venturing further into World 1 wouldn't be all that useful. And that 400 points per star is quite the extravagant price. So at this intersection, which I'm sure a bunch of you have forgotten is what this whole tangent was even about in the first place, we'll be taking Prince Bully Blockade onward and through Castle 6. Those two levels give us another 29,200 points and three green stars. After all that routing, we get to then relax a bit with Castle 7. And I have to say, the two green stars that we get without adding extra points are quite easy to get using Peach. This gives us 8,200 points. That level then brings us to the foot of Bowser's Castle. We need 130 green stars to enter, and at the moment we only have 90. The time has come to put that spreadsheet into motion. It may cost a bit more points than I'd prefer, but let's get some green stars. The first two we get are the ones hiding behind those destructible walls. We can destroy these walls with our cannon boxes, and so long as we keep our collateral damage at zero, both of these stars add 4,010 points to our total. We then get 5 from 3 Toad for 20,100 points. The 100 comes from this P-Switch. Next up, we play some levels that we skipped over on our first pass, mostly due to not having enough green stars to unlock them at the time. 3-2, 3-6, and 2-2. Two, two. All three of these levels allow us to get through with 3 green stars and 12,200 points. Then we head to World 4. First thing to do here is get the flagpole in 4-2, and while we're here, let's go ahead and get that green coin based green star. Like I've said prior, we can collect the coins themselves with the gamepad for free, but getting them to appear in the first place costs 100 points. Also, since in order to both take the secret exit and the normal exit, we would necessarily have to play this level twice, so those mandatory piranha plant points get counted twice. Therefore we leave this level with 5,300 more points from it. Next up is the Brolder Blockade, which we defeat and get a green star from for 4,800 points. We then retrieve all three of 4-4's green stars, which are pretty easy to get. The actual challenge of this level comes in the form of not jumping on Buzzy Beetles, and pulling off that lure an enemy to the corner before getting on the flagpole trick we used on that Koopa a little while ago. All in all, 12,200 points endured here. That makes a path to 4 Mystery House, which is certainly tricky in light of the coins littered everywhere, and with the short time limit there's not much opportunity for gamepad shenanigans to help us. We do end up cleanly getting 10 stars for 40,000 points though. With the World 4 stuff taken care of, let's revisit Castle 1 and get all of its green stars. Yes, it does mean we have to collect these two coins and the points associated with them, and that's not even to mention the P-Switch one or the green coins one which I just mentioned, uh, that's another 12,400 points gained due to this level. And while we're at it, let's get some more green coins green stars, like the one in Castle 3, 
and the one in Castle 4, and the one in 5-4, and the one in 5-6, which may actually be the most difficult green coin green star we've done. I mean, there's the Shockwave dude, which we can freeze, but if we're freezing it, that means we're not collecting coins. Jumping and dodging also isn't great due to the whole holding two controllers at once thing, combined of course with the flipping floor. Oh, this level also has a laughably easy green star to get, as well as one that we're not going after because it would require too many points to be associated with it. These four levels are together responsible for an additional 20,600 points. And what do you know, with a current total of 665,920 points, it seems that we're up to exactly 130 green stars. Time for Bowser's Castle. This isn't the final level. As such, we're still on the hunt for green stars. Green Star 1 is very easy. Green Star 2 is also very easy. Though getting to the next part of the level without lowering the bridge is a bit of a leap of faith. And Green Star number 3 is a bit annoying. It requires some self-sacrifice from a player 2, as well as leaving our power-up housing character vulnerable to this annoying helicopter dude. We then move on to these hammer bros, which require us to put on our best dodging skills to avoid a hit, then followed up with another big leap of faith. After that, it's time to fight Bowser, which is a boss fight and therefore causes 14,000 points. It would be nice if Player 2's bubble wasn't constantly obscuring my view, though. Anyway, this level gives us a score of 26,200 points. But wait, there's more! That's right, we've got one more world and 37 more green stars to overcome. Let's-a go! We'll start with the critical path levels. Bowser 1 starts us off with an enjoyably tough level. There's coins throughout that make things a wee bit trickier, but the real challenge of this level is the dry bones. They're relentless, and man, it can be so hard to not accidentally tread on one. In terms of green stars, 1 and 3 lie down relatively simple detours, while the second one hides in a mystery box with a P-switch, which is an auto 100 points. It's also covered with coins, but those can be dealt with using the gamepad. So a 3-star run of this level costs 12,300 points. Neither Bowser 2 nor Bowser 3 are very good places to get green stars cheap. In fact, I believe both of them would have a price of 200 extra points per green star. The difference is that Bowser 2 commits us to less at that price point. This was certainly the most demanding Plessy level we've faced, with so many coins to dodge, beetles to jump over and the like. There's just a lot more going on here. Even so, if you Captain Plessy right, you can walk out of that level with one green star and 4,200 points. Bowser Train is next, and man, its highlight has got to be this green coin green star set during an auto-scroll while having to avoid these swinging spike bars. A tasty challenge, to be sure. We also get to sacrifice the health of player 2 to get a star again. Yay! Oh, and also, there's a boss fight, which does its usual thing of having 14,000 points just show up out of nowhere. We leave this level having gained 3 green stars and 26,300 points. Bowser 5 looked pretty tough at first, given the coin rings in extremely tight spaces. Nothing to worry about though, as tucking oneself away in the corner actually lets you get past them unscathed. Outside of that, there's not much interesting about this level, since literally all of the green stars are just boringly and easily hidden on top of walls for the catsuit to climb. 12,200 points from this level. Bowser 6 features flying dry bones back again in force. Seriously, these guys really gave me trouble here. This level is also home to a green star that requires killing so many boos that it would be laughable to think it should be gotten in a low score challenge. The other two are alright though, leading to this level saddling us with 8,200 points. We then take a break from regular levels to take on Bowser Mystery House. It's a bunch of climbing based challenges, some with coins to dodge, some with bricks for the gamepad to get out of our way, and some that are just really easy. But all 10 are most certainly possible. 40,000 points for 10 stars granted here. Bowser 7 is another level we have to beat, and it's pretty easy. That extends to the placement of the green stars, although one of them is a green coin based green star. Not ideal, but alright. This level adds 12,300 points to our score. We then have some boss fight reprisals with Histocrat and Motley Boss Blob, which go more or less exactly how they did last time. Each of those levels gives us one green star and 18,200 points. And that's all the levels that have to be beaten to unlock the final. Now we just need to obtain 11 more green stars. We find 3 at Bowser 4, and once again the main threat here are Dry Bones. They're so annoying and easy to accidentally kill. In spite of the Dry Bones, we do get 2 green stars flawlessly and 1 that is a green coin based green star. 12,300 points are gained in the course of getting those green stars here. 
Speaking of green coin stars, we also pick up one from 5-2. We've got to get the coins quickly since we're on a trapeze, but it can be done. There's also another star here, but no, just no. We leave the level with 4,100 points for one more star. We have a couple more green coin based stars to get from 5 Castle and Castle 7, both of which are gained for 4,100 points. We also play 4-3, which has a really easy green star, a really easy green star with multiplayer, and one that is... no. Just no. And finally, 6 Mystery House can give us 3 more green stars for only 12,100 points, if you make sure to use the gamepad. But that brings us to 170 green stars. Time to take on the final level. One thing to keep in mind that is actually a pretty big shift in mindset, is that we don't want green stars anymore. We've unlocked what we need to unlock and have no need for any more of them. As such, we ignore all of them in this level. The level plays out in a mostly normal fashion. These stairs at the end did give me some trouble because I was being rushed while also having to avoid these coins. Luckily, it was Gamepad to the rescue. Thank you. Soon, we're at the top of the tower surrounded by Meowsers. And after hitting this PAL block just a few times, we beat Bowser, and in a very nice turn of events, this is the one boss in the game that doesn't give any points for defeating it. That means the final level only gives us 200 points from the flagpole to add to our total. So, after that long, arduous journey, it's time to finally answer the question we started this video with. What is the lowest possible score required to beat Super Mario 3D World? After all my research, the number I've come to is 889,120 points. And that is a very high number. I guess it's just because the way it's structured, Super Mario 3D World is a very high scoring game. I shudder to think how high the score must get on a normal playthrough. Anyway, that is the lowest I was able to make the score fall, but this is certainly the type of challenge where missing little details or exploits very well may have happened and could have changed the outcome significantly. So if you want to try to get this number even lower, be my guest. And perhaps if we discover enough methods to make the score fall considerably more, I may make a follow-up video detailing those methods. Anyways guys, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you. Your watch time is very much appreciated, and if you would care to like, comment, or subscribe, that would be great as well. I promise the next video won't take quite this long to make, and until next time, I've been Seamcraft, and uh, do check back here after the Mario 3D All-Stars collection is released. Until then, goodbye.